You have two ways to control student devices. You can use both the Mosul Manager app and the Classroom app on your iPad and your MacBook. You have to be moved from FileWave to Mosul to use the Manager app on your MacBook. Each of these apps works in slightly different ways. There is a comparison chart that I will send with this video that basically shows what Manager does versus Apple Classroom. At a glance, Apple Classroom does seem to have more options, um, but it can only be used with in-person learners. Virtual learners could be used with the Manager app, but you're still a little limited what you can do. You want to open the Manager app and select a class. Once you open the class, you want to make sure that you select the correct device for your students. Because our students at the high school have MacBooks, you want to choose Manage Mac OS. You also want to mark any students absent who aren't actively participating with you. This is extremely important because you don't want to control a device that isn't under your supervision. You also want to set a class duration before you start the class to make sure that you don't forget to end the class. Manager does not rely on proximity. It only relies on a network connection. So it's very important that you do end the class or even students who leave your room or students at home will still have you controlling their device. Once you click start class, then you're going to see some options that you can do um, with the class. You can, well, the class feed is disabled, so don't worry about using that one. It'll feel like it still works, but it doesn't actually send anything. With class history, you can see a history of all classes that you have started in the past. Anything, um, any student data saved with that class history will still be there, including any screenshots that you take with the manager screenshot tool. Once you start a class, you can use things below the class menu, such as study app, study sites, heads up, safe test, app lock, and quick poll. You do need to be a little bit careful using these with virtual students. With study apps, you can create a list ahead of time of allowed apps for your class. When you use study apps or turn it on, that means that other apps on the student device will not run. So you have to make sure that the Zoom app is considered an allowed app or else your virtual students aren't going to be able to Zoom with you. Study Sites is disabled because it, is inter it interferes or conflicts with the content filter, but you can still set some study sites that students can access through their manager app by clicking on, when they open manager, they can click on my sites and see any study sites that you have put in here. Um, and they can still open them, they're just not limited to those sites. The quick poll is um, nice because it is a bell ringer that you could do or an exit ticket. It does allow every student in the class to participate in a poll, whether or not they are in your room or at home. So that's a nice feature. And then the other three are ones you kind of have to be a little careful with. Heads up locks the device completely and displays a custom message. This is great for in-person learners, but for your students at home, you're gonna lose them on Zoom when this happens. So be careful using heads up. Safe test locks devices into a specific website. So that means that you could put the, the Canvas website URL as the allowed safe test site and students will be forced into Canvas only and they can do things within the Canvas environment. Now, if you are locking them into a website, they can only do things inside that website. So any external tools used won't be allowed. For example, if you lock a student into the Canvas site, they won't be able to use or act, like do any activities that rely on a Google Doc. So if you just wanted your students to take a Canvas test, you could lock them in that and they can take it. With App Lock, it locks the devices into one app. So you definitely don't want to use this with the Zoom students unless the only app you're going to lock them into is Zoom. Otherwise, you probably only want to use App Lock maybe for in-person learners.
You can also nickname a class or add a temporary teacher by going to the settings and that is where you can do the nickname. Um, nickname might be helpful because the names are limited to how they're named in Apple School Manager. So if you wanna nickname something for your own sanity, this is a good place to do that. When you're using or looking at the live screens, this is only going to be something you can do with in-person learners. And students do have to allow you to see their screen. But I think this is a good way to be, be able to keep social distance between the teacher and student and still help the student with something on their screen. So the Classroom app is a totally different kind of app from the Manager app in that it just does different things. I think the Classroom app is a little bit more geared toward improving workflow than restricting the device. So let's take a look at some of the things you can do in the Apple Classroom app. One thing to know is that Apple Classroom relies entirely on Bluetooth to send information to students. So they have to be in close physical proximity to you and when they leave your room and their laptop leaves and goes away, chances are you will lose control over their device. Um, Apple Classroom is really great at improving workflow of classroom management because it allows the teacher to share files, guide the learning, send student devices to certain websites automatically, etc. Now, you do need to know that teacher and student laptop must be running the same operating system. So if both teacher and student are running Catalina, Apple Classroom is going to work. But if teacher's on Mojave and students are on Catalina, you won't be able to use Apple Classroom with them. So I have a screenshot here of what an Apple Classroom looks like when it's open. And the students this year are now going to auto-enroll. So before, in the past, you had to give them a code and add them to your Apple Classroom. That is no longer the case. If you open your class, your students will just enroll. And when they walk in your room, they'll just join. Their Bluetooth on their device does need to be on, though. So what some of these things do, um, you'll notice the eyeball, for example, hides apps. And that's kind of neat because if a student has a bunch of apps open on their computer and you click that button, it's going to basically like fade all the apps to the background and show only their desktop. I think this is a great way to get their attention without necessarily closing anything. You can also navigate students to directly to a website, but you have to have that website bookmarked in Safari for that to work. You can lock devices. You can airplay a student's screen. You can mute devices, another great way just to get a student's attention without locking or closing anything. And you can open an app on student devices. So if you wanted Keynote or the Calculator app or some kind of app to just open on all of their devices, then you can just do that. And you can do this for the entire class at once, or it's possible just to select individual students to only send that student and open an app on that computer or lock a device or mute, etc. Manager really doesn't allow you to do things with individuals. It's pretty much the whole class or none. Also, if you're using Apple Classroom and you open up a document in like Pages, Numbers, Keynote, Safari, Preview, something like that, if you have any of those Apple apps open, you can click the share arrow or share arrow and then airdrop the file to the Apple Classroom name and that will airdrop each student the file without having to click each student's name. So that's a handy feature as well. Okay, so I'm gonna demonstrate how some of this actually works. On the left, I have a teacher laptop with a teacher account, and on the right, I have a student laptop, and I'm gonna demonstrate sort of what these features look like in action. I'm going, I am in the manager app on my teacher laptop, and I am going to go into a class inside my manager app. And in this class, I have one student, his name is Pete the Pirate, and he is participating in learning with me today, so I will not mark him absent. If I had any students who were absent or not actively participating in learning with me, I would mark them absent so I'm not controlling their device. I'm gonna set my class duration to 10 minutes and I'm just gonna say start class. So um, it does take a minute. It's not immediate. Each device that you are controlling is being sent a command right now. Um, and 
what will happen when the student device receives the command is the student will have an icon in their menu bar that has the manager symbol in it. And that is how um, they can tell that you're, the teacher is controlling their device. So it does take a little minute. While that's being sent, what I'm going to do is just show you how to set up something like Study App. Actually, it just appeared. So there is a little icon in the menu bar that looks like the manager app that is telling the student that their teacher is controlling their device. So um, if I were to go to um, timeline, what I can see is basically what has happened or what the student has done in the time I've had them in class, which hasn't been very long, so there's really nothing there. Um, I can go to live screen and any students who are in the room, I can view their screen. So if I pull up the screen right now, I'm going to be able to see the student screen and when the student opens something on the screen, I'm going to be able to see what they're doing um, as well. So you can see as the student navigates towards Google, it shows me what they're doing. As the teacher, I could take a screenshot of something by clicking this little save icon um, and that would save it inside the manager app for me. It's not a screenshot on your device, it's within the app. Okay, so I'm going to close that out. I don't need to see the screen anymore, but if I did go to screenshots, I would see any screenshots here that I had taken on the device. Um, okay, so if I go to study apps, you can set ahead of time any apps that you want to basically only allow to open on the student's device. So right now, if I were to turn on study apps by toggling this little toggle thing, then the student would only be able to open Zoom, Keynote, iMovie, and GarageBand. So it will kind of lock down the device to just those applications, but you do need to make sure that Zoom is one of the applications that you have allowed, especially if you have virtual students. If you go to add applications to the list, you can filter what kind of apps you're looking for. So you could look for installed apps, that's where you're going to find Zoom. And I think it's easier just to type the word Zoom in to find it. You can also switch this to Apps and Books VPP. This just stands for Volume Purchase Purchasing. And so anything like that we purchase from the App Store, like Microsoft Word, Keynote, Numbers, iMovie, GarageBand, all of those things would be filtered under Apps and Books VPP. And when you find one that you want to add to the list, let's say I want GeoGebra to be added, I just click it and then I click the little check mark and it will now add GeoGebra. So if I turn on study apps right now, what will happen is the student will only be able to use those apps on their computer. And it's not instant, it does take a minute, but in about 30 seconds or so, um, I will not be able to use Safari anymore on this, on the student MacBook. Okay, so now when I try to open Safari, when I try to open Chrome, those just bounce on the student device and I can't open anything. Pages won't open, none of those will open, but if I open iMovie, iMovie will open because it's in my list of allowed apps. So I would say for sure, if you are using study apps with students who are virtual, you wanna make sure that Zoom app is in there as well. I did test this with a student device earlier. I had the student in a Zoom meeting and I turned on study apps and they were still able to stay in Zoom with me. So that did work. If I shut off study apps, it will send a signal to the device. Again, it takes about a minute, but then they would be able to open the rest of the apps on their computer again. With study sites, you can set aside some websites, but it's not going to limit students to this because we have it turned off. However, if the student opens up their manager app, then you, they can go to your class and then once they're in their class, they go to my site and they'll see any apps that you have here. And if they open up one of the sites, it'll open up in a reader mode inside of a manager, inside of a browser that kind of behaves like Safari, but it's within manager. So even though it doesn't limit students to those sites, it could be a place where they can open it that's not in Canvas. Um, if I were to do heads up, I only wanna use this with in-person learners because virtual learners, it will lock their device and they might get kicked out of Zoom. But for in-person learners, if I apply heads up, and by the way, you can click this little chalkboard and change what this says and do a custom message. But if I apply heads up, then their device 
once it gets the command, will lock. And it just says, heads up, your teacher has locked your screen. Now again, for your students at home, this is not going to work really well. So don't do it with them. And then if you remove the heads up, it'll send the device a command and take it back to where they can use their computer. Good way to get their attention if you need to. Um, Safe test actually locks the computer screen into a website. So I'm going to demonstrate Safe test. If I click on Safe test, I can put a URL for a website in this spot. It will also keep any ones I've used previously. So I've got this um, patentville.instructure.com website setting here. This is the website that goes to Canvas. If I click this site, then what will happen when I apply safe test is it will take over the student screen and they will only be on that website. So when I click apply safe test, it's going to open up Canvas on the student device and they are locked into that site. So they can do anything within the Canvas environment, but nothing that uses an external tool. So if you're trying to use a Google Doc with this, it's not going to work. So it does need to be a native Canvas thing for the safe test to work. So if you're giving a Canvas quiz, that's going to work with safe test. Now, I'm assuming that when you're in a Zoom meeting with a student, that the Zoom app will no longer work while they're doing the safe test. So again, maybe not something you want to do with your virtual learners. When I disable the safe test, that student device will go back to its normal setting. So here's Apple Classroom. If I, your classes should automatically be loaded and your students should be in them. So you shouldn't, you won't be creating classes or giving kids a code, anything like that. Um, I'm going to open up my class and when I do, it should, Pete should just automatically join my class because his laptop is in the room, Bluetooth is on. So um, Pete's menu bar also shows an AirPlay icon that's blue and that indicates to Pete that the teacher is able to see his screen. So um, with this, I can open an app on the student computer. So if I wanted to open up the calculator on the student computer, I can click open and it is going to open the calculator app on that device. Now the student can certainly close the calculator app if they want to, uh, but at least it opened it. You can open a website on the student computer, but you as the teacher have to have that website bookmarked in your Safari bookmark. So I'm going to go to my favorites. I'm going to pick the Pattonville website and I'm going to just open that on the student computer. So when I click that and click navigate, it's just going to open that website using the student's default browser. So on the student laptop I have, Safari is the student's default browser. So Safari will open it up. If Chrome is their default browser, Chrome will open it up. But you have to have it as the teacher in your Safari bookmarks. If I wanted to airplay the student's computer to my Apple TV, I could do that by using the airplay button here. I can switch from students' um, apps to the student screens as well and see all their screens. And if I want to open up one student and see that student's screen, I can do that as well. You can also lock a screen and it will just lock the student's device. And you do then have to unlock it to open it back up. Okay, so I'm gonna demonstrate what the hide apps button does. That's the little eyeball. It actually hides the app. So this particular student has open iMovie, Keynote, Safari, all those apps are open on their device. If I click hide apps, what will happen is all of that student's apps will just fade away and it'll show their desktop. Another good way of just getting their attention. And then you can also um, mute a student's laptop as well as an attention getter. If I have a document open in Preview, Pages, Numbers, Keynote, or Safari, and I want to airdrop this file to the student device, um, you would just go to your share arrow, or share arrow and choose airdrop. But from the airdrop menu, instead of picking your students, you'll choose the name of the class that is in the Apple Classroom. So if I want to airdrop every student in the room, my file, then I would choose my class name and the students will all get airdropped a file. 
Same thing for the students. If the student wanted to send the teacher a file, then they click the share arrow, go to AirDrop, and they can choose the teacher with by looking for the class name as well. And then as the teacher, I get a little blue icon right up here that shows me that I have got items have been shared from my students. So when I click that little icon, I will see that Pete um, shared a file and I can open that up and look at that document. So once I end the class, you're gonna get a summary of app usage, shared items, and students. This is your only shot at seeing this data. So if you do wanna capture something from this, you wanna make sure that you uh, take a screenshot of anything you wanted to see right here. You can also just pull up an app and see which students were using that, and you can get to your shared files from here. Save those shared files if you need to keep them because once you click done, all this data from that session is gone. It does not save it. However, if I open the manager app back up and I go to class history, I can see any sessions that I've had open in the past and I can even see sessions where I've had screenshots. So I can tell that Monday um, on the 7th, I did one where I had a screenshot because there's a little screenshot icon right there and I can open that back up. I can go to that class and see that screenshot that I had saved. The classroom app does not save any data. So I can pull up that screenshot that I took at 8.37 a.m. 